welcome to the third video in our Knowledge is Power chess series. This video is Tactical Themes in the Tarash French. And the French defense begins with uh, white playing 1e4 followed by blacks 1e6. And the basic idea of the French defense is to allow white to create an ideal pawn center with the thrust e4 and d4. And after d4, black plays d5, trying to undermine the pawn center immediately. Now after the thrust d5, white has three ways that he can deal with the thrust here. The first one is to advance the pawn to e5 and play for a kingside attack. The second option that white has is to relieve the tension by exchanging pawns with e takes d5 e takes d5 and you have an, a balanced uh, symmetrical position with really no tension. The third option and the most popular option that white has is to maintain the tension in the position with a move like knight c3. Of course the drawback to knight c3 is that white is inviting black to play bishop b4 and pinning the knight uh, the so-called win hour variation. But today we're going to be looking at 3 knight d2 by white and some tactics involving the Tarash variation, which is what we reach after 3 knight d2. The selected games that and positions that appear in this video are from the upcoming Mongoose Press ebook, Quick Kills in the Tarash French by Bill Harvey. And this ebook is over 500 pages and it features 374 games over 700 diagrams all stemming from the Tarash French and get this it's only 99 cents the same price as all of the other quick kill books by Mongoose Press it's a great deal and we're going to include a link to the first quick kills book on the Alapin Sicilian in the details section of the video so be sure to check it out now let's uh, talk about Knight D2 before we actually get started the advantage of Knight D2 is that black cannot now play bishop b4 because of the pawn, pawn thrust c3 and uh, bishop b4 has no use. Of course the disadvantage to playing knight d2 is that white has now made his dark square bishop on c1 kind of passive and difficult to get into the game. But before we go any further uh, I want to mention that the tactics that we're going to be looking at in this video were chosen from the ebook and I selected them because the tactical theme in each game appears within 12 moves or less. So I wanted there to still be a reasonable connection to the opening family. So we're going to be looking at five games in this video out of the 374 that were that are available in the ebook. And the first game that we're going to be looking at is Marholev versus Hernandez. And this is in Donostia, Spain, 2009. So we've already seen white just played knight d2, three knight d2. Black follows with knight c6, knight gf3, d takes e4, knight takes e4, knight f6, knight takes f6 check, queen takes f6, bishop g5, queen f5, bishop d3. The deployment of the bishop to d3 is a very frequent theme in the French defense that you'll see come up over and over after bishop d3, uh, queen g4. And now white is ready to play uh, a tactical move on his ninth move that wins material. So pause the video here and see if you can figure out White's uh, tactical move here uh, on his ninth move. Okay, the move is 9 h3, and the queen is somewhat trapped. Can't play queen back to h5 because after he plays queen h5, white has pawn to g4, and the queen truly is trapped. So after h3, Black's only option is to take the pawn on g2, queen takes g2, but after queen takes g2, rook h2, and the queen is trapped again, she can at least get a rook uh, for herself, so queen h2, knight 
takes h2, and white has a big advantage here, being up almost three pawns in material. All right, the second game we're going to look at is Marwa versus Ebel, and this happened in Herlene, Netherlands, 1999. The game does not start as a French, but it transposes into it. So the game begins with 1e4, knight c6, pawn d4, pawn e6, knight f3, d5. The thematic d5 thrust of the French. And after 4, knight b to d2, we are in the Tarash variation via transposition. Black continues with uh, bishop b4, and of course we mentioned that that really doesn't work because of the pawn move c3, bishop e7, bishop d3, knight f6, pawn to e5, knight h5. Now remember, we mentioned at the beginning of the video, whenever white advances the pawn to e5, he sort of has a ready-made kingside attack and we're going to see that pop up in two or three games that we're going to be looking at in this video. And one of the games is this one that we're going to be looking at, where the king side attack pays off. White follows with g3, and that's kind of a strange looking move because he's already deployed the bishop, and he can't redeploy the bishop to g2 very easily. But the point of pawn to g3 is to keep the knight out of the pesky uh, f4 position where he can harass the uh, bishop. So after g3, black plays g6, pawn to h4, castles, knight g5, and f6. Now, white is on the 11th move, and he has a tactic that he's ready to play here. So pause the video now and see if you can figure out white's 11th move that wins him material. All right, the move is knight takes h7, taking advantage of the pin. If the king captures, king takes h7. White has queen takes h5 check, and black can basically resign because after king g8, queen takes g6 check, king h8, queen h7 mate. So instead of the king capturing, black can try rook f7 but devastating results after bishop takes g6. Black's going to lose more material and uh, just a huge advantage for white. Okay, game three is Waldowski versus Belts. This is Hamelberg, Germany, 1989. And of course the game starts e4, e6, d4, d5, knight d2, f5, pawn to e5, pawn to c5, knight gf3, cd4, bishop d3, knight to c6, white castles, knight b4, bishop e2, queen c7, knight takes d4, bishop c5, bishop b5 check, bishop d7. Now here on move 11, white has a tactic that wins material. Pause the video now and see if you can figure it out. The tactical shot is knight takes e6, hitting the queen on c7, and of course taking advantage of the pin of the bishop on d7. Black has to move the queen, c8 for example, and after knight takes g7 check, king f8, Bishop takes d7, queen takes d7, knight h5, and white is up comfortably two pawns with absolutely no compensation for black, a shattered king side, and a king that is stuck in the center of the board. All right, our fourth game comes from Keininger versus Taut Vasis. This is Oldenburg, Germany, 1949. Game starts with e4 e6, d4, d5, knight d2, pawn b6, knight gf3, knight f6, bishop b5 check, pawn to c6, bishop to d3, d takes e4, knight takes e4, bishop e7, queen e2, 
bishop to b7, castle, castle, rook e1, knight bd7, knight eg5, pawn to h6. And it's kind of an interesting thing that happens frequently in chess games. A lot of times a, a person will play a move intending to relieve the position or as a defensive measure and it actually ends up divide, inviting a disaster just as it does in this position. So after pawn to h6 we have a tactic here that wins material. Pause the video now and see if you can find White's twelfth move. White plays knight takes e6, f takes e6, queen takes e6 check, king h8 forced, knight h4, and now black really can't stop the threat of knight g6 check, so he tries to move his rook away with rook e8, and after rook e8, 15 knight g6 check, he plays it anyway, king h7 forced, Knight takes e7, discovered check, and black actually resigned in this position. Alright, our fifth and final Tarash game comes from Pick versus Turco, Cologne, Germany, 1993. And in this game, we're going to see another example of a devastating kingside attack after white plays the pawn advance to e5. So we have e4 to start, knight c6, knight f3, pawn e6, d4, the thematic d5, and knight bd2, we've transposed into the Tarash French by white, knight f6, pawn to e5, knight e4, pawn c3, knight takes d2, bishop takes d2, bishop d7, bishop d3, and I highlighted these four pieces because as I mentioned, the white pieces are just tearing right through the black king side. You see the light square bishop on d3, the dark square bishop on d2, and of course the queen on d1, all tearing right through the black king side. Just an absolutely devastating position already by white. And with black having played the knight to c6, Black doesn't have his thematic pawn to c5 move to try to undermine White's position and go for play on the queen side. Because of that, uh, Black plays knight to a5 and he's hoping to follow up with pawn to c5 here to try to get his queen side play going. However, White says uh, none of that. We're going to play knight g5 with some threats. Black responds with g6, queen g4. And once again, just like last game, black tries to relieve a little bit of pressure in the position by playing h6 and invites disaster. White has a tactic on this 11th move. Pause the video and see if you can figure it out. All right, white takes a decisive advantage by playing knight takes f7. And of course, the threat is king takes f7 queen takes g6 check, king e7, queen f6 check, king e8, bishop g6 checkmate. We want to thank you guys for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, you can follow us on Twitter, at Mongoose Press, and also you can follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash mongoosepress. We'll catch you guys next time with another installment of Knowledge is Power chess series by Mongoose Press.